an unforgettable true story from the forgotten war in Korea. Two naval aviators from distinctly different backgrounds demonstrating what it means to be wingmen in war and in life. Try to keep up. Jonathan Majors plays Ensign Jesse Brown, the Navy's first black fighter pilot by way of a Mississippi sharecropper family. He was the first African-American killed in the Korean War. This man didn't just pull himself up from his bootstraps. He pulled himself up from his bootstraps and put himself in the sky. Glenn Powell, who played Hangman in the recent Top Gun movie, plays Lieutenant J.G. Thomas Hudner Jr. from a prosperous New England family, an elite prep school, who turned down Harvard to go to the Naval Academy and later became an aviator. Hudner received the first Medal of Honor of the Korean War for intentionally crashing his plane in a futile effort to rescue Jesse Brown, his wingman, after he was shot down behind enemy lines. Really, at the end of the day, it's what is the definition of a wingman and how far are you willing to go for the guys next to you? Glenn Powell is also the film's executive producer, having optioned the film rights to the book Devotion by Adam Makos prior to his Top Gun involvement. Powell met with the real Tom Hudner Jr. just before the pilot died at age 93. The thing that I took away from meeting him was how much Jesse Brown means to him, you know, now 72 years later. And that friendship was something he thought about every day. And I think as you've seen today, it's the, the Brown family and the Hudner family are tied together for life. So, so this area was the Black Wall Street of Hattiesburg. This is where Jesse Brown's grandchildren and Tom Hudner's son worked together to make sure the film accurately reflected the uniqueness of their personal bond, given their backgrounds and the times. You know how tired I am of people trying to help me while looking down on me? I am not looking down on you. What do you want me to do? Just be my wing man. Well, I certainly think their relationship was, was unique. Given the, as Thomas the, Hudner's the, son believes Jesse Brown was his father's first black friend, coming from his far more privileged New England background, compared to Jesse Brown's in rural Mississippi, where he worked in the fields with his father and was frequently taunted Certainly dad's baseline, uh, I think, approach to any relationship and certainly to a wingman was someone shows their character through their actions and behavior, not through the you know, color of their skin. The two pilots were recently inducted into the Naval Aviation Museum at the Pensacola Naval Air Station, where they first trained and where film director J.D. Dillard's family was once stationed. My dad was a naval aviator 30 years behind Jesse, and the story was quite similar for him, is that this is something that he had to predominantly do alone. And there's a very specific isolation that comes with that. So of course, you had Tuskegee Airmen in World War II, but the benefit of what they had was community. Vintage Navy Corsair fighter planes and an aircraft carrier mock-up were used to set the scene in 1950 as the pilot squadron prepared for the Korean War, which coincided with the desegregation of the U.S. military after World War II. It's good to know the men you're flying with. See what they're fighting for. What are you fighting for? After he uh, died, uh, she went back to uh, school. She went to Alcorn State University and uh, she became a, a teacher. Jesse Brown's daughter, Pamela, was only two when he died and never got to know him. But his legacy lives large here at the African American Military History Museum in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, his hometown. Yes, sir. Devotion's cast members and director came to Hattiesburg for a reception and special screening of the film for the Brown's family, friends, and the entire town, where Jesse Brown has long since been recognized as a favorite son. Let us know that somebody like him is, you know, back in that time when he went in, in the military and he's one of the first African-American pilots, and he was good, too. Hattiesburg's historic Sanger Theater is where Ensign and Daisy Brown used to frequent in the 40s and 50s, but back then, they couldn't use the front door. They were escorted to a side alley and to a side door that led up to a balcony into what was called the colored section. 
Well, that door and that policy are long gone. And for tonight's special screening of devotion, the Browns are getting the front row. What happened in the past happened. You can't make it go away. You can't erase it. So you've got to embrace it and grow on it. You've got to grow from that experience. I am so grateful to the city. And uh, I'm so happy that we, we get to celebrate this and, and really lift up what this community has meant. For Jesse Brown's granddaughter, Jessica, the film has been worth the wait since the film's basic story of friendship without cultural boundaries is just as timely today. There's a great line in the movie after we experience Jesse's loss um, where they say the world needed Jesse Brown and the world needs Jesse Brown and Tom Hunter's story very specifically right now. I think the level of divisiveness that, that we experience in, in this country, it's important to see them overcome that. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Mike Saray in Hattiesburg, Mississippi.